sure it's an apple a day that keeps the doctor away. Wow, that was really punny of you. Now what? It's my potassium deficiency. Somebody keeps taking my bananas for my lunch. And I just need a second to calm down. Well, the last two movies you showed us were pretty bad. Really? That's some good news. I mean, they weren't that bad. But, but they were definitely not worth watching more than once. Well, I have it. The worst movie. The worst pile of garbage ever made, ever. Is it Hardcore it's Henry? Hardcore Henry. Yay! So Hardcore Henry is shot first person as if you're the character. Hardcore Henry is the first movie to be shot like a video game, which means everybody everywhere very soon is going to be copying it. So remember, Hardcore Henry did it first. So, uh, are you guys gonna introduce yourselves? No. Introduction is important. We're making videos. Who's gonna remember a guy and a puppet without introductions? That's not important. Parkour Henry is part robot, and two people are fighting for his technology. And he and yourself, you have to decide kind of as he goes who the villain is, which you find out pretty easy. And it's really fun. My favorite character was, oh, I don't remember his name. Was it Tim Roth? Oh, I did like Tim Roth, yes. Wait, that wasn't Tim Roth, was it? Yeah, it was. The crazy guy? No! This is war! I'm gonna start off by saying this whole review is gonna be spoilers. You should go see this movie, it's really good. But there's a lot of stuff in it that's gonna really surprise you, so spoilers. See this movie if you have any sort of interest in it. Stop watching this. I I think he was definitely the best part of the movie. He oh he was he was funny, he was awesome. He was so realistically badass. Am I supposed to trust your opinions? Well, what do you mean? I don't even know who you guys are. How am I supposed to let you guys tell me how I feel about him? I don't know this puppet! I don't know you! What have you guys done to prove yourselves that you can be real critics? At first you think he's like, like there's, he's like an agent, there's a bunch of them, or he's just like a super, you just don't, you don't understand. Well, at first I thought it was going to be like a running joke in the movie that he just kept dying and coming back. Oh yeah, I thought that a lot. I thought but, that a lot of things. But it, it turns out to be much, it, it served the plot a lot better than just a joke. So Hardcore Henry wakes up in this strange science facility in there, kind of like explaining to him what happened. He was in some sort of accident, I forget what, I know that they said his face was shot off. That was actually a really well-placed twist because there were several moments where I was like, this, this isn't quite making sense. You know, like there was the scene where they were in the van and instead of just killing the girl, the guy just takes, him, takes her back. In that moment, I was like, why isn't he just killing her? Yeah. Like, that's Henry's entire drive is to save her. And it ended up being so good because of what was actually the truth. And the truth was that they were both the villain together. It, like, ugh. This movie was really good. I can't say enough about all the action. 
the different weapons they use, and every scene, how well, resourceful it is, all the things that are happening that you're witnessing. The only, the ending action scene to me was a little unrealistic, and I got tired of it, but everything else was so fun. I'll come back to that in a second, but I, what I really loved in the action scenes, man, you interrupt her a lot. What's it to you, you pig? <laughs> was how he kept picking up weapons. That never happens in action movies, and that's such a common complaint, and it was so great to see that in a movie. Like, every time his ammo would run out, he would just pick one up from a guy he killed, and it, like, that gave it a feeling of realism. There was a lot of stuff in this movie that made it feel real. The camera angle itself contributed to a lot of that. This is why I wanted to see it. The trailers looked so entertaining. A lot of action movies do the same stunts anymore, and it's just not really impressive. But to do it in that camera angle where you're like looking dead on, they had to find such new ways to do these stunts, and that made it seem impressive. Like they had to find ways to make it look real, and it looked like they were actually happening. Like when he was on the bridge, he was following after that guy yes. also on the bridge. Or when they set the bus on fire. Yeah. Like, I felt like everything in the movie was actually happening, and that made it feel like a good... It, a lot of action today feels very weightless, because the characters don't seem like they're reacting correctly to the injuries that are occurring to them, and this movie really did it correctly. This is probably the best action movie since Dread. I, I don't watch a lot of action movies, because they're usually... But babe, San Andreas looked amazing. It blew me out of the water. And especially seeing this movie and then seeing a movie like Batman and seeing, like, they need to... It's the differences between action. Yeah, such differences. And it's interesting, too, because Hardcore Henry was even shaky cam a lot of the time, but you could still tell what was happening. And it was fitting. It wasn't... It wasn't distracting, it was adding to the realism of it. The, I mean, obviously because it was shot for first person, they could get away with that. It always amazes me how many people say, oh yeah, like I love action movies, and then they list their favorites, and... This movie has so much in it and I wish more people, like, I think of all the people I know who would consider themselves fans of action movies, I wish all of them would go out and see this movie. It would blow them yeah. away. I really liked Henry in this, too. I thought he had a really good character. A common complaint I've been, like, seeing is that this movie is just like a video game. And it's not, and it's because I felt like this was going to be a gimmick. I felt like... They were just gonna film it first person and say, oh, it's like a video game, and then it was gonna suck, and then nobody was gonna give a shit. And they were just doing it because it was easy. But the things they were doing in it, as I mentioned before, the stunts had to have been harder by doing this. And that, that tells me that they cared about this movie. And when this becomes the next found footage, which it will, it will become the next found footage, first person movies. Because it's going to be, it, it makes so much, so much easier. Like, you can just put a camera on somebody's forehead and have them walk around a haunted house, and that can be the movie, and people will go see it. This movie is not that. So you guys going to talk about the important stuff? Important stuff? Like what? So when I watch reviews, I want to hear the basics. How was the acting? How was the directing? What was the music like? What was the feel? You guys do that? Any of that? Even a little bit? Nobody cares about that shit. They just want pure 
condensed opinions. Now, if you'll excuse us, we have a movie to talk about. They really took the time and they cared about this project and they made sure it was good. And one of the ways that it's not a gimmick is because Henry is a character. It's not supposed to be like, guys, look, it's like a roller coaster. Henry does things that you wouldn't think to do. His body language is just so unique. You have to think that for a character that you don't see or hear the entire movie, for him to have this much character is so impressive. I really, I liked the way he reacted because he wasn't, a lot of people I feel like in movies are like, oh, this is happening. They overact. Yeah, and they, they like want it to be clear to the audience, I'm reacting negatively or afraid. It's like they're on a stage and they're acting like, you guys suck. Thank you. Yeah. You know, we really try. I'm sure some people are not gonna like the science in it, but there's, it's a really fun action movie. It's a really good action movie. If you're gonna go see it, just go and enjoy yourself. You guys really suck. You know, if there's one thing our 19 viewers have come to expect, it's the lack of quality.
I liked how the action ramped up. You said you didn't like the last scene. I, I loved the last scene. And it made perfect sense to me that it became as extreme as it did because it actually this is a good example of what we were just talking about with Henry being his own character. The villain is in a room talking about how there are all these other super soldiers behind him who have better batteries than Henry does. And so Henry's gonna be overpowered and then the villain leaves and one of the clones gets powered up and comes in and they have this fight and Henry manages to overcome him. I'd sit this because he had more experience being awake than that person. And then he ripped his chest open and took that battery. And not only was that funny, but it gave him the same power as the other people. And so then in the scene that you were talking about where it gets a little bit too far-fetched, those things combine where he's had the experience of fighting for, I think, two days. He has now more power than he did. So he manages to overpower these 99 super soldiers. And I think you're right. I think I'm underestimating the difference of just waking up and having had two days worth of living experience and the difference that would make. I think it just was a little bit too far-fetched for me. It was like a little bit like, oh, okay, I'll let this slide. Like, well, all right, guys. But I think you're right. That does play a big factor. It reminded me of Kick-Ass, where the ending of Kick-Ass gets really silly, but you don't care. Yeah. At that point, you're just willing to watch anything. This is almost what I was expecting out of Deadpool. I was expecting a really crazy action movie with a really sarcastic main character, and Deadpool really failed to deliver that, at least to me. And this, this did that. This gave me what I was expecting from Deadpool. And so I was surprised that more people weren't seeing this, because it's like Deadpool, but better. I will say it probably had a lot to do with the shady cam. Um, someone in our theater left right away. I assume that's why. It actually didn't bother me. I usually have really, I, I usually have a really hard time with shaky cam. Like Cloverfield made me motion sick. Um, there was some other movie, some horror movie that was really shaky that gave me motion sickness. This, I was fine watching this. I don't know what it was. This was shakier than those two movies, but it just didn't bother me. I think it was because I was so in it. Like, I was so ready to see what was going on. If you liked Dread, you should see this movie. If you call yourself a fan of action, you should see this movie. You might have to watch it in doses. Like, from if you suffer from motion sickness very easily, but you should really watch this movie. kill you now. So, a uh, quick question for you. What does a potassium deficiency do? It weakens your muscles. But here I go. You okay, man? been chained up this entire time. I'm a puppet. I can't move without someone carrying me. No, Frozen, come, no, please, not Frozen. Don't, oh God, let me go. Don't let it go. Let me go. No, not Frozen. I wonder if it has anything to do with the eviction notices on our door? Eviction notices? Ratchet and Clank is a movie based off a video game franchise. You mean this one? The plot, uh, the, the basic plot of the movie is... 
A lamb box? A lamb box? A lamb box, I think. A lamb box. A lamb box. Named or Ratchet. Ratchet. Who wants to join this team of superheroes with Commander Cork. And then he finds out the Commander Cork. Commander Cork, yeah. That's what he said. He said like So Commander Cork is the actual hero he turns out to be. And then he's all devastated. He joins up with Clank, and then together they do some actual good, and then in the end he's able to join the hero team. And there's the bad guy, and then there's an even worse guy. And that's about all you need to know. So, so I was really excited for this movie. I, I really like this series of games, or at least I, I like the good ones. Um, you like the new one, too. Yes, the new game. The, this, this review of mine actually like Devil. The movie wasn't very good, and I was very disappointed. Although I was completely expecting it, because video game movies are never good. And it was clearly pandering to children and not going to have the comedy of the games. Yes, and that was a big, big problem. Because the reason why the games are so successful is because they are more adult. They treat children like adults, and children like that. I, I remember being a kid no. and, and liking things like Invader Zim and The Addams Family, which is more darker than like children are assumed to like, but I liked it because it was something different. I didn't like all the happy-go-lucky kid shows that I was forced to watch, that it was boring I, and I knew it was fake. I was more interested in stuff that seemed real. And the series as a whole seems to be going away from that. When that's like the reason why it's so popular. I think my biggest critique for this movie is that I had more fun watching him play the games. Not even playing them, just watching him play the games than I did watching this movie. And movies are meant to be watched, games are not. So I think that really expresses the level of, the, like I guess, expresses the lack of entertainment. I was, I was really bored. I think you guys had more fun because you knew every little detail and so you were able to kind of pick things out that were kind of good. But Yeah, that, that's something I really like, I did really like about the story, um, the movie and the game. It's kind of like a remake of the original game and they did a really good job of like tying everything together. So in the third game, Dr. Nefarious just kind of shows up. But in this, he's in it, and he's like a part of the story. And so now you kind of understand who he is and where he's coming from when he's going to show up as Dr. Nefarious later. If they make a sequel, I don't, I don't think they will. This movie is doing very badly. But I really liked how they tied everything together. You know, they referenced things that happened in later games so they didn't just like come out of nowhere. But for someone who knew, I mean, I mean, you watched you play both the original first one and the new one, but... As I said, there were things that I really liked about this movie. It, the, the biggest compliment I can give is that it was a movie. A lot of movies based off of video games still feel like a video game because they don't adapt it correctly, or it's missing some kind of vital information. They made a movie here, like it... It makes sense, I think, if you haven't played the games, you'll understand everything. But there were a lot of very generic tropes that it relied on, very generic scenes and actions that were just so obvious and boring. But one of the things that makes Ratchet and Clank so good, the, the games, is that it, like, it does things you would never expect, but it makes perfect sense in the world. And that really wasn't happening in this movie. It was just a really generic kids movie. I think the games took a generic relationships and a generic plot and added really adult cross humor and it contrasted each other and that made it funny. That made the kid scenes, like the kiddie scenes well, funny and that made the adult scenes That's funny. not true because you bring up the character relationships and the driving force of the first game is how Ratchet is kind of evil. Like, Ratchet is very selfish in the first game, and Ratchet and Clank are like, 
they're, they're very against each other, against each other's motives. And then they come together in the end because they're like, wow, we just need to, we need to save the universe. We need to stop focusing on ourselves. And this movie didn't do that. They got rid of that completely. And that's like, that was one of the best parts of the first game. The game, though, is really good. It's very short, but it's very good. And I liked what they added to make it fit. Wait, which game are you referring to? The new one. Okay. It's, it's very short. Like, I bought it the day it came out, which was a week before the movie, and I, I beat it before the movie. in two days. I think you'll get a lot of replayability out of it, but the game itself is very... And it also... It takes the best scenes out of the movie and puts them into the game, so... There's not really a point to see the movie at that point. Like, there were some really good scenes in the movie, I thought. Which one? Definitely. A lot of the stuff with Drek, I thought was really good. I really okay. like the Dr. Nefarious stuff. It almost... When the game was... When the movie was announced, it was supposed to be like the studio Insomniac Games that made all the games was making the movie. They were writing it and making it. And then somewhere along the line that changed. And I'm assuming they like took their script and changed it a little bit to suit a more cinematic, child-friendly zone and we got what we got. I don't know, I think I think you were more impressed by it than I was. And I don't know if that's because of you and knowing the franchise. It's because well. I really wanted it to be good, so I, I looked for anything <laughs> that could possibly be good. I, I think overall I was pretty bored with the movie. I, maybe that's just my outsider opinion, but I was not very entertained. I wouldn't say there were any scenes that really thrilled me or that I thought were really well done. Yeah, and that's kind of what I'm saying. Like, they took a script that seemed really good and then muted it. Like, they took away the stuff that could, would be considered risky or controversial and just... which is, like, the whole point of the series. They just took away everything that would make it entertaining. And they watered just, it down. Yes. Would you recommend it? No. Not yeah. unless you're a huge fan of the series and are just interested in it. Then they pro you probably already saw it, if that's you. I wouldn't recommend it to kids. I think kids would get bored. I wouldn't really recommend it to people who like animation. The animation was terrible, by the way. There were some instances where I was just appalled by it. <laughs> Do you remember that scene with Quark in the ship? And, like, his antenna was bent over, um, but it wasn't, yeah. like, moving. It was just, like, as he turned, it was side. turning with his head. It wasn't, like... Yep. Some really yeah. poor decisions with this movie. The game's good, though. Walk over to Bert. Have you not been chained up this whole time? Then I say a line, then you look annoyed, and then you pick me up. <laughs>